Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the day four of the uh, PHIS2 Digital Analytic Tools Academy. Um, so uh, today we are going to have uh, a very interesting topic uh, that we'll be covering, uh, which is uh, the pivot table. Uh, while it is, it's an interesting topic, uh, uh, there are a lot of content area to cover. So um, unfortunately, we won't be able uh, to wait until everyone joins. So we are going to start today's session. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, one reminder, uh, in case you have not been able to provide feedback uh, for any of the following, uh, any of the previous days, uh, especially yesterday, uh, please remember to provide feedback to the sessions. So we take the feedback uh, very seriously. So uh, we have gone through the feedback and understood a few areas that uh, we might need to change in the way that uh, we are delivering the content. So especially one area that uh, most of you have highlighted is to uh, have more interactivity. We will try our best, uh, but inherently in this online platform, uh, there are challenges in having interactions the way we are doing it in uh, on-site academies, but we will try our level best to do that, especially in this uh, co-analytic uh, tools uh, that we'll be covering in next few days. So today we are covering pivot table, tomorrow data visualizer, and then on Monday maps. So these are uh, uh, really important topics and uh, we sincerely hope that if you have any queries, you can uh, ask them on Slack or uh, if the facilitator uh, gives you time, uh, you can connect uh, through your audio and ask. Right, so without taking too much time, um, let me invite uh, Pramil from uh, his Sri Lanka. So uh, he's a kind of a, a expert in uh, conducting this topic. Uh, he has done it uh, for so many years. So uh, over to you Pramil. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, hope I'm uh, clear and you can see my screen. Yes. Can hear me also, no? All fine. Right. So, uh, as Pamod mentioned, uh, we are starting the analytic tools component of this uh, DHIS2, that is one of the four components, that is uh, the pivot tables data visualizer and the maps and also dashboards. So we will be starting with the pivot tables today and uh, tomorrow they will be doing the charts and then followed by maps and dashboards. So these are very important topics and uh, so I'll try to go slow and uh, we will cover the most important things here during the show. So objectives for this uh, today's session is, uh, first we are going to describe what a pivot table is and uh, then We'll demonstrate how to modify a pivot table and uh, then how to create pivot tables in the app and uh, also how to use the options and pivot table layout and how to use the categories and organics as disaggregations and uh, explain how different uh, number types can be used in DHS2 pivot tables and demonstrate how to apply legends to pivot tables and, uh, and uh, explain uh, how to add descriptions and sharing features and also uh, how to do that. So uh, the session will be, uh, the, there will be a small presentation which will be followed by demonstrations. And uh, after that, uh, we'll be giving some time for you to practice the uh, exercises in the DHIS2 instance. So moving on to your tables. So as the mention says, it's a table. It has rows and columns, and it's a visualization type with rows and columns. So anybody who, has, who is familiar with Excel and other spreadsheet uh, tools will be, must have used pivot tables before. And what pivot means, you can change the number of dimensions in the table. That is, you can change any number of dimensions, add them to columns, and change them to rows. Likewise, you can pivot within the table. That is why we call it a pivot table. So it is a good analytic tool. And especially pivot tables are used when you have to analyze a larger chunks of data. And, and also when you have multiple dimensions with, within your visualization, within your analysis, then you can use pivot table. Unlike in charts and maps where you can't do this, uh, 
and a big number of data. So uh, moving in the presentation, so uh, creating a pivot table in DHIS2 is simple. We have uh, just uh, three steps. First, you have to select the data, periods, and the org units. That is the three dimensions in DHIS2. And uh, then you can alter the table layout as you wish. And there are additional options which you can use in pivot tables to make them look like you want and uh, modify them accordingly. So just three steps, three simple steps, but you have to remember these steps. So moving back onto the basics in DHIS2, I hope everyone has undergone the fundamentals, online fundamentals academy before coming into this one. So you must be familiar with the three W's in DHIS2. That is what, when, and where. So these are the basic fundamentals when you are creating any type of analytic tools, any type of visualization, whether it's table, a chart, or a map, you have to make sure that you know these things and you select these things. So when you move on to what, what is the data we use? It could be indicators, it could be data elements, it could be reporting rates, or it could be tracker data with individual data. So that is what comes under what component. And then in the when component, it's a period. So there are fixed periods and relative periods where we will describe when we are moving on. And third component is where, that is the organization unit. This is where the data is coming from. So there is user dependent uh, org units and also fixed org units. So we'll describe those also when we are doing the layouts. So uh, the first part we will see what are the pivot table dimensions and how to modify these three dimensions. So I'll be uh, sharing the DHS2 instance. Hope you can see it now. So when you log on to the instance, this is where you land on the dashboard. So where are we going to create the tables? So if you go to the apps icon, the six, nine square icon, you can see different apps which are available to you. So now in the latest versions, the pivot tables and maps, sorry, pivot tables and charts are both embedded in the data visualizer app, which is right down here. Earlier, there was an app called pivot table. It is still there, but we will be using the data visualizer now to create both tables and graphs. So even so what you can do is you can search for visualizer and filter that app and uh, launch data visualizer. Yeah, so the express is now. Sorry. So when you launch data visualizer app, this is the layout we see. I'll start with opening up the table so that uh, the layout is much more clearer. So to open a table, you go to file and then click open. Here you can see a list of tables and charts which are saved in the system. So as I mentioned, both tables and charts, both are uh, now in the data visualizer app. So if you see on the top, there's a box to filter, to search what you are looking for. And there are two drop downs on the top right hand corner. One is for all types. That is, you can see both tables and charts. But if you want to see only tables, you can click pivot table. Or if you want to see a particular chart type, which we will do tomorrow, that you can also do. So you can pick pivot table if you want and search for tables only. And then the owner. If you want to see chart uh, tables created by you, you can filter it like that. Or uh, if you want to see tables created by others, you can filter like that. So I'm going to open this HIV testing table, HIV 
test when you type it will filter and i'm going to open this first table hiv testing performance by sub pork units so when you click on that we will see the output like this so now you can see that pivot table has been opened on your screen so uh, any volunteers to describe the table which we see now anybody am i audible um, yes yes you yes. audible yes. yeah so uh this looks like the pivot table for testing by um uh for the last 12 months uh in uh the sub organizational units of uh animal region and food region and we are looking at hiv test performed hiv test positive and the test positivity rate thank you right thank you so uh as you mentioned uh, it's a table uh and of the tests performed the hi test performed by you know by your units for the last 12 months and uh, the rows are the district the regions that is the organization units and the columns are different three types of data that is one is hiv test performed and one is hiv test positive and the third one is hiv test positivity rate so you can see rows and columns within this table so that is what you see in this white blank area the table which we open and if you move on above that you see uh, a place where columns rows and filters are indicated this part is called the layout which we will describe later where you select the columns rows and the filter and above that there are four buttons one is to update that is when you make any changes in the dimensions or options in the table you can update it second one is file menu so there are different option uh, menus in that different menu options in that uh, the third one is the options button which you click to launch the options for the table and fourth one is the download menu that is where you download data so these things we will discuss when we are going forward and on the top right corner there is a place called interpretations and that is about the right half of this and now if you move on to the left half so on top you get this drop down where you select what type of analytic item you are going to create we are focusing on pivot tables today so i'm going to select pivot table but when you are if you want to create a chart which we will do tomorrow you will be able you will have to select the chart type then there is a field, then there is a list of dimensions which you can use for the table there's a filter button also for the dimensions and below that we have the three main dimensions that is data period and org unit which we described earlier that is the three w's in dhis2 so here this is where we configure what data we want in our table what for what periods and for what org units and below that there are other dimensions which you can add to your table these things also we'll describe later so we'll see how to modify our table currently our table has three data items for last 12 months for two regions so let's see about the data items first so when you move on to the left first one is data you can click this data button data menu and launch this data selection dialog box you can do this also from here the columns data if you click that same thing will come but we will use the left side menu for the moment and when we click data you can see the dialog box to select data as i mentioned 
So on top, first thing you have to select is the data type. Currently, by default, it's indicators, but you can select either indicators, data elements, or data sets, event data instance, and program indicators. So in ag aggregate, when you have an aggregate instance, you will use the, indi use the indicators, elements, or data sets. And these are for tracker programs. And when you select either one of these, then you have to select the group relevant to that. If it's indicators, you can select the indicator group. And you will see a list of indicators within that indicator group. So what we will do is we will uh, remove one of these data items. We will remove these data items and put them back. So we have currently three data items. One is HIV test performed, then the number positive and HIV positivity rate. Can someone say whether these are elements, indicators, or data set items? Uh, I, I think the test positivity rate is an uh, indicator. Then uh, the HIV test performed is an element, data element, uh, and the HIV test positive is also an uh, an element which is used to create to come up or to calculate the indicator for the test positivity rate. Yes, correct. So the first two are data elements, which are raw data captured in the system. And the third one, the positivity rate, when you see the word rate or percentage or things like that, you can guess that it is an indicator because we don't enter the rates and percentages into the system. We calculate it using the raw data, which we enter. So as you mentioned, uh, there are two data elements and one indicator. So I will remove the, uh, the HIV test performed, which is a data element, and update the table. Now you can see only two data items. So I'm going to put that back into the table. So you go to data, you select data elements, and it's in the HIV group. And if you scroll, you can see HIV test performed is here, or you can search it here also, HIV tests performed so now we have to select this and put it to the right side or you can simply double click it so if i update it now let's see what will happen so we see the same three data elements but in a different order so that order is also defined here so earlier this was on top so if you put it back on top now you can see the previous table with the same order Let's see an indicator also. So we will remove this HIV test positivity rate and click update. So you can see that one column is missing now. We don't have the positivity rate now. We are going to put it back. We go to data, indicator. So we guess that it's in the HIV group. And uh, we'll search for it, positivity. So we have this HIV test positivity rate. We are going to put it back and update. So now we see the same original table which we started with. So we have learned how to remove data items and how to add those data items. All right. So next, we are going to move on to second dimension, the period. So we will see how to change the period dimension in the table. So when you click that, currently what is selected is last 12 months. Let's say we want to change it to last six months. So when you go onto the left side of the dialog box, you can see two options. One is relative periods and one is fixed periods. So fixed periods, it's easy to understand. So you define a certain fixed period like January 2021, February 2021, or all 
2021. Likewise, you select a fixed period. You remove this one and you can apply 2021 here. So you get a fixed period of 2021. So what happens here is when you create this chart and save it and regenerate it any day, it will be the same chart for it because it will have the 2021 data unless the data is changed within the system. But in contrast, if you go to relative periods, the date, the reporting period, the data period of the chart table changes depending on the today's date. For example, if we uh, create a chart a table using this month and save it today and we get data for May 2021. But if we generate the same chart, same table next month, that is in July, we won't get data for May 2021. We will get data for June 2021. So it's a relative period to the current date. Similarly, you can use relative years, relative days, relative weeks, likewise. So if we generate a table for this last year today and save it, we get data for 2020. And if we generate the same table in 2022, we get data for 2021. I hope the concept is clear, the relative periods and the fixed periods. So why do we have this relative periods in the system? Who can answer that? Sorry, first why, do, again. why do we have relative periods? What is the importance? Any main place where we can use the relative periods? I always want to see the last three months uh, report. Always want to want to the fixed period. So in that case, we use the relative period. Uh, so in, in have, dashboards, uh, we can see then it's convenient in using it in dashboards. Yes. So uh, the main use of this is in the dashboards. So if you create a dashboard using this month, if you create a table using this month and put it in the dashboard, and when you come next month and just on the dashboard, the data will be updated. You don't have to do anything. So it's period is relative to the date, so the dashboards will be automatically updated. So that is one place where this is important. So uh, I'm going to change this uh, period to last six months. So when you're selecting uh, another thing to keep in mind is this grouping of periods. The, these are grouped according to the frequency. So if you want months, you have to select months here. If you want years, Last year, you had select year, year. Same in both in fixed and relative period. So I'm going to say select last six months. So it should be in months group. And I select last six months. You can have multiple periods. But I'm going to select last six months and I'm going to update it. So now the data has changed into last six months data. Right, so that is about periods. And next we are going to see how organization units work in this table. So we are going to click on organization unit and see what, how this animal, how did this animal region and hood region came into this table. We select organization unit. Now you can see the user subunit is ticked and you cannot see anything else. The below tab, uh, the tree is blank because already user subunit is selected. So there is a concept called user organization units. So that depends on which user is logged into the system 
and using this app and what privileges is that user having so that means what organization unit is that user attached to when it comes to data analysis so if you select user organization unit here the data for that users organization unit will be displayed so if that user is attached to the national level he will the chart at the table will show national level data if you select user subunit then one level below that that is probably a province or maybe districts in some countries is depends on the organization unit hierarchy so the second level one below that user at is attached data will be shown so this one third one is the third level that is two units below that user so if you untick those so 